everybody. Welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studio for another Tuesday episode of Security Matters. Sarah Musquiz is with us today. She is the channel sales manager for Alcatraz, which is an exciting new technology you've bound to have heard of by now, but we'll, we'll definitely get into that a little bit. Um, Sarah's the channel, uh, channel sales manager over there, and you may have also seen her on Innovation Nation. So she's uh, uh, quite the podcaster herself, and today she gets to be on the other side of the microphone, which will be fun for me and hopefully fun for her. Sarah, thanks for taking the time to join us today. I know uh, I know a lot of work goes into these things, and I know you know about that, so I appreciate you taking some time to uh, jump out and help us out. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. No worries. Well, let's. Um, I usually like to. Uh, I know you've been introduced uh, in the industry. You sort of already built a name, but let's. Uh, in case someone hasn't caught up with you yet, that's in maybe in my audience. Um, go ahead and give us sort of like your history, um, um, as much of your background as you care to share. We don't all put everything out there on social media these days, but um, uh, kind of lead, lead us how you know your your sort of introduction to the industry and uh, how you ended up at Alcatraz. Sure, no problem. First of all, thank you. Um, it's It's been a crazy year now because um, with coronavirus and everything happening, that's also how my podcast started. Um, I needed to do something with my time, right? So um, it's been really fun. And, you know, I, I went to Cal Poly um, over, uh, I guess it's now seven or eight years ago. Um, I was, uh, you know, an industrial technology uh, major, which is more like an applied engineering degree. Um, I focused on, you know, business operations, kind of like a, a less math oriented industrial engineering type of study. Um, and so I actually interned with Johnson Controls as I was, uh, you know, I had a fifth year of school. So before that, I went and interned. I learned, you know, in the field with JCI mechanical and electrical systems. And then um, I would say, you know, security was the first thing I was exposed to by them, which I always thought was the most interesting. I loved it. I thought it was so innovative. I felt like it was just the area also had the most opportunity to innovate in general, um, just with what we could do with it. And so, you know, I, I naturally, um, you know, went back to school, then I uh, graduated and then took a full-time position with JCI. So then um, Johnson mm -hmm. Controls really, you know, I have a lot to thank them for because everything I know today, everything I learned, everything I've been exposed to is really because of them. I ended up in the smart building space. So after a couple of years of doing work with owners and working on mechanical electrical systems and going through all their training programs at JCI, I then went into the connected technology space where we worked on really large projects that, you know, had a big vo uh, low voltage packages. So the technologies we were talking about and designing and selling were um, all across the board. And obviously security was one of those. So um, then I, you know, met Alcatraz, I guess it was last May or sorry, April, May timeframe um, in 2020. And we were looking at them for a frictionless and touchless uh, solution with one of our uh, large clients in Los Angeles. And so I met Alcatraz by chance and truly just fell in love with what they did and what they, where they were going. I kind of always would tell my vendors to give me something that was similar to like the iPhone or just smart device, easy to understand, easy, you know, to sell and to solve problems with. And, and that's kind of what I felt when I met, when I met the rock, which is, which is our product. So hopefully that, hopefully that's a good overview of my background. Nice. Now, um, and I think, uh, was it the rock or was it Alcatraz software that won? I know it was like a product of the year. I'm trying, I'm thinking it's the last time we all got together for as is in, uh, in person. Was that maybe in eight, 18 or in 19, I guess in the fall of 2019. Yeah. The award I think was, um, yeah, it was around that time frame. I obviously wasn't with Alcatraz at the time, but, um, you know, we were, I would say that's actually, I'd say one of the, the first times, our company really became, you know, noticed, to be honest. I think people really started understanding or hearing about us and, and, try, and trying to understand, you know, what we do. But that, that was a huge award for us, of course, because that really put us at the front line of access control. Nice. I, I know some folks on the, um, the, uh, the judging sort of uh, team, and they yeah. were like, you got to go see Alcatraz, dude, like blah, blah, blah. So it, it was definitely a hit from there on out. Um, talk to me about industrial technology degree. You know, there's um, we have we have a, a 
talent competition that we're in, right, with all the younger tech uh, folks out there in the, in the United States, and they don't always know about our industry and uh, all the great things that we do. Um, tell me, tell me about how how industrial technology background. I saw how how it sort of got you here, but what were the the components of that that you learned that you feel like brought you for or you, that you brought forward with you into the security realm today? Because you obviously saw that the light clicked when you saw Alcatraz, like whoa, here's here's a good merger of hardware and software. So was it was it from that background and education as well that you could see the sort of the future right there? I. The answer is yes. And I actually love that question because I haven't actually been asked that before. And when I think back on, on, yeah, well, when I think back, you know, to my, you know, educational experience, as we all know, in our industry, there isn't a major for security, right? There isn't, you know, I think what I learned as being an integrator is you have to kind of own your own business and you have to do what you can to make of it the best it can be without really someone teaching you exactly how to do that. Right. So I think what I find most common between our business today and what I was learning in college is um, as part of my major, we, we had a heavy focus on sales engineering, um, technical mm. selling. We learned a lot about business operations. We learned a lot about manufacturing and packaging. And I think what it really gave me was the full 360 to how to kind of own your own business. And so mm. I would say what was interesting was when I did meet Alcatraz, given that we are a startup, you know, for a long time being in our industry, I thought, you know, I I had a lot of friends from Cal Poly that went to startups, they're living the startup life. And I wasn't, I was in construction, of course, and it wasn't the same as, you know, what a lot of my friends were doing. And I thought to myself, like, when am I going to ever get to work for a startup? And I think what was kind of cool is that when I did meet Alcatraz, of course, that's what they were. And just the ability to kind of 360 round out your own business and like wear so many different hats, I think is what directly, you know, correlates to what I was taught in school, because we got that experience to learn how to make a business work and how to make something great. And so I think, you know, that entrepreneurship that I was able to kind of learn and, and figure out, you know, what to do with, I then got to now apply to Alcatraz, which I think is really, really fun. So hopefully that's the question. (laughs) Yeah, it's so important. I mean, it, it, um, it, especially, you know, being at Johnson Controls, and I won't, I won't call him like a dinosaur or anything. I mean, Johnson Controls does a lot of amazing work, right? But to um, have worked there and and at that construct, you, I read that you were kind of handling the the implementations end to end, right, and driving the team. So from that construction sort of trade, you know, we have the Women in Security, National NAWIC, the National Women in Security, National mm-hmm. Women in Construction out here, I'm sorry, um, that Christine's a part of. So I know that that community, but um that that construction community, they are, um, in my experience, fairly slow adopters. So did you get an opportunity to bring new, new solutions to that group? Or was it like sort of where it was specced out by uh, a consultant and Johnson just delivered it? Or were you guys part of the consultative process uh, in the projects that you were in? Yeah, great question. So the specific unit that I was a part of often covered the end user and the consultant. So we, we, nice. we were really involved early on in the SD, DD phase of a job, which is like the schematic design, you know, where, and then they huh. start putting the actual design together for the project. You know, a job would typically get built, would, we'd actually see things going into the ground three to five years out. So the, the, the group I was in was called Connected Technologies, which they still, still exist today. And we're focused on, you know, they were they were focused on, or we were focused on the smart building. So what that means is bringing all the different low voltage technologies together. And the only way we really would have success is if we had that buy in very early on, where we can help, you know, kind of influence the budget and the vision, and then put all the mm-hmm. pieces together because we did actually go build it, right? So we are the ones at the end of the day start to finish. You know, we'd go from design all the way to installation. And so um, it was a very specific group within JCI. I think there was about 50 of us. I didn't start there. It was always my goal, um, joining JCI, knowing who they were and the type of projects they worked on. It was always kind of like my dream to be a part of that team. And I had some mentors that, you know, very close mentors of mine who were part of that team as well. And so, you know, it's a, it's a big strategy play. It's, it's, it's not easy, right? Because often we, we didn't really, like our, our best spot to sit wasn't once you're already bidding on a job when it was fully right, right. specified, right? 
we we would want to be creating that relationship early on uh, to really help make the technology vision become the reality. And when you just go bid, and to your point, a lot of the construction folks in this world, you know, they they follow the traditional method, right, of building buildings for a reason because it works. So um, it's it's hard to take risks at times as the contractor when you're kind of on the line to you know meet a budget, meet a timeline. So yeah, we would sit really early on in the opportunity and we would kind of help the owner and the architect and engineer day one, put that technology plan together. That's awesome. I know um, the folks up at, at, at Microsoft, you know, Brian Tuscan and his group, he's a, a Hawaii guy that I know. Um, did you get a chance to work with them on any of the new campus development? Cause they've been really closely tied to John's controls and working together on kind of pushing the envelope with technology. I don't know if uh, that's something you got to touch on or not. Personally, I wasn't, you know, my my territory focus was at the time more like the Bay Area, actually, because oh. I was living in the Bay for five years. But our group and, you know, a lot of the technology experts at JCI did work closely with them. I mean, we we hosted a lot of our cloud solutions on Azure. Um, that was one of our, and even our internal corporate, you know, solutions that we would use internally, you know, was was with that. And yeah, I would say, you know, of course, we all we all know Brian. He's amazing and he has yeah. he's just such an amazing leader for our industry. And I think I think his vision, I think what he does and how he thinks, and I think how he finds the right partners to execute is something that we all, you know, can learn from, right? Like they're the execution strategy and and that partnership that JCI and Microsoft has formed, in my mind, just from being at JCI. Um, you know, back in the day, I think is is top notch. So, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I keep expecting to see a lot of things like that, and maybe it'll be um, more branded type solutions that have come from a, a, a startups like your own. You know, that Johnson Controls adopts into their offerings. But um, yeah, I haven't been back up to the campus since they got started with the build, so it'll be a, it'll be interesting to get us all back up there. I know we had a as is women in security event up there. Ooh, was that in 19 also was it you know uh, Microsoft hosted us on the campus which was nice um I saw that you're involved with the as is women in security community as well um can you tell me a little bit how you got involved and what sort of um support you see um either giving or getting from that group yeah first of all I would say as is in general has been an amazing amazing experience the women in security component of course and just the whole organization you know so back when I was interning one of my coaches at JCI had had shared with me, you know, a really good way to get out there and learn is to go get involved in the right organization. So with that, I went and joined in as is and stayed involved. So even as that intern and then coming back full time, I continued my involvement with the Bay Area chapter. And there are some amazing people I met. I participated in the mentorship program that they had for a year. Um, I, you know, found my own mentors within David Gibbs. If you're hearing this, listening to this, yeah. anyone who uh, knows David Gibbs, he's, I know Dave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is phenomenal and has truly day one, I mean, taken an interest and helped me grow and has been the best sounding board each step of the way in my career. And I think that as this is a whole, of course, women in security is extremely important as a female, right? But I think that organization, what they're doing and how they're enabling a lot of the youth and creating these teaching programs. And I know David also was very involved in that in starting some of those up. I mean, we we say in our industry, a lot of us don't really know how we got here. We didn't have that like straight path, you know? And I think what is so cool about us is, is they really care. They really go out of their way to create a training program because we know college doesn't have that. So I would say, do I think the support is there? Do I think, you know, have I enjoyed it? Absolutely. And I think it's something that we need to continuously, you know, make better and better every day. So, yeah, love. I love as is. I love, we have a lot of great orgs. Uh, Sarah, we will be right back. We're going to pay some bills. I got to take a one minute break. Stick around and we'll be right back, folks. Hang on. Aloha.
Hey, thanks for sticking around, gang, and welcome back to Security Matters. We're talking with Sarah Muskoy. She is the channel sales director over at Alcatraz. And we haven't talked about Alcatraz a lot other than her excitement when she found something that was amazing and probably um, industry changing. I'm, I'm going to go there a little bit. So um, how um, can you tell us about, well, what you could, could, what could you tell us about sort of the uh, courtship? Was it like, a, hey, you should come work for us? You said, yeah, I jumped in the cab and ran off. <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I could totally share the story. It's, it's kind of, I mean, even when I tell the story today, I feel, I still feel that feeling I felt and I, oh. and I like to call it like an epiphany almost, um, just quick backstory on kind of like who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm weirdly obsessed with like Elon Musk and Steve Jobs. I don't know why I always have been, maybe it's the engineer in me or the, or that I love, you know, the way they've disrupted. There's just a lot about them. I find is very interesting individuals. And I think what was what, you know, I'm not the biggest super user when it comes to any of the smart tech out there necessarily, but, but, but sitting in the connected technology space at JCI and learning the value of how we can use technology as a tool rather than stumbling over it is something I think that I saw firsthand the stumble. And I think being a problem solver, I am, I always wanted to find the thing that was going to just make people happier and make it easier and make just things like better for everyone involved, you know, whether it's the installer, the end user who's using it, the person in interacting with it. And I think what, you know, just between the blend of JCI and then, you know, my personal interest in general, um, you know, when I met Alcatraz, it was really for a customer. It was, we were vetting technology. I was taught early on, you know, you got to do your homework before you just go and buy something new or push something new to a customer or just, or, or, or introduce something. Right. And I've, you know, I was burned a few times in the past, like with new technologies or new, new versions of products that maybe hadn't been, you know, fully deployed before or whatever it may be. And so naturally I was just like a skeptic, I guess you could say when I would meet a new technology. So, I mean, the, the, the truth of it is that I did a, I did a technology review and it was truly in the essence of introducing this to a customer. And I had a bunch of my, what I call personal Yodas that are like professional, you know, coaches and mentors and friends, whether you're a technician that I work with, or you're a manager or another salesperson, we all jumped on a call together. I kind of orchestrated the whole thing for everyone. I uh, had us all put together the, the challenging questions ahead of time and had everyone kind of do their own level of research, um, gave me their input. And then we basically just brought them to the table and we were like, okay, present, here's the questions ahead of time that we're, that you should expect to answer that will come up. And we gave them 60 minutes. And um, in those 60 minutes, I think what was very interesting is at the end of it, I have to be honest, I, I did walk away a little confused and it wasn't um, confusion. It wasn't confusion. Yeah, it wasn't confusion. I know it's probably surprising to hear. It wasn't confusion around if I thought the product worked or it wasn't like skepticism around does this make sense and is this right for us as an industry it was it was confusion around what category of our technology offerings and security it fit in. <laughs> and nice. I'm being honest I couldn't figure out like what it was and not in a bad way I think that what I'm trying to get at is you know with my with with how many problems I learned that this one device was able to solve it put me into such an uncomfortable position because I wasn't used to that. I was used mm. to having to take all these different technologies, put them together, figure out how they were going to work. And that was kind of what got me excited about my job. I loved having to fit parts and pieces together, you know? Mm. So I almost was kind of just like, what is this? How does this do so many different things? And like, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. So I just, after that, you know, I did a little bit more vetting. I, I talked to the individuals of the company on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And it was really still in the context of bringing it to my customer. I wanted to be the SME before I went to my customer and said, hey, I think you guys should look at this. And mm -hmm. I had looked at six other touchless and frictionless technologies was all in the light of COVID. This was right in March or Mar sorry, April, May, right after, you oh, know, wow. March occurred for our world, right? March was a big, big deal for a lot of us in the U.S. So, you know, at that moment, I didn't want to just go 
too quick and like, you know, recommend something that just out of an, out of nowhere popped up. Cause I think we can all agree. There were some technologies popping up out of the woodwork, like one COVID. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I was, and I was, you know, and I was just doing my due diligence. Right. Cause I didn't want to give my customer something that wasn't going to last. So then I ended up talking to a few more folks and, and now, you know, the real truth to it is within 36 hours, I ended up joining the team. <laughs> it oh, was, wow. yeah, it nice. was, yeah, it was absolutely not planned. There was, there was, there was no courtship even needed. Like, I think what it was, was just this technology was something that I had never seen before. And with my obsession with Elon and, and Steve Jobs and just meeting the CEO, Vince, who's our founder, there was just too many things that I loved about it without even being there. Like I hadn't even touched a rock before. I didn't even know, I'm not kidding, like if they actually existed. Like I just, the idea, the concept was insane to me. And then I think what ended up happening is once I joined, it was so cool because it only got better and better every day. I mean, the product, I joined right when we were ready to hit market. And it was so cool because, you know, we had one other, you know, individual who I was working with and we, and it was the two of us to just be this superstar team to just take this to the industry. And really no one had actually had the exposure to it in that way yet. So right. it was, it was just, it was cool. I mean, yeah. So that's the story, 36 hours and totally unintentional. <laughs> well, what an opportunity. I mean, you, I think sometimes you, when you can sense it and you knew enough about all the other technologies to say, ah, this is, this is a play, you know, it's going to be fun. Um, yeah. So uh, did you get, did you get to pitch SpaceX yet or Tesla? We're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, we've taken it as far. We, 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 we like, you know, we have these fun, you know, dreams as a company or like imagine just when you know you walk up to your tesla and the door opens and it knows who you are and then you start the car with your face i mean you know we take you know because the you know i think that, that it's just it's so fun to us because i think like there's no better place than a rock to be than a tesla i mean it just only makes sense <laughs> yeah that's you what know? that's what i was thinking when you said you're a big fan of elon uh make sure you get that in this you'll probably have to give him one or two and he might want to pay you in bitcoin now i don't know if you saw his big investment but I know I he I called him yesterday. I, I don't I don't actually use Twitter, but I will say that I do have a Twitter just to follow him, which sounds crazy, but that's awesome. No, that's it. Cause, I, Cause that's where he's active. He doesn't have any other, you know, platforms really that he's on. I mean, yeah. that's the only place I could really see what he's up to. Good stuff. Don't stop till you meet him. Um on the on the other side, I know as this channel sales, so you were uh, you were um I think you signed up PSA. Can you talk about how that's going this year? I mean, it's been, um, I know it's only been, what, ha not even half a year yet, maybe, but um, how have you found our group of integrators there? You know, Christine and I have been involved with them for a long time. She's the first female board member they ever had in 40 years. So that's an organization that's hopefully going undergoing a bit of change as well. Um, how, how have you found the receptivity there? And uh, what do you think about those integrators? So there's a couple things to unpack there. First off, I think I think we all know PSA has had an extremely amazing, you know, reputation yeah. since its inception, right? So I think first off, just to share, it was a huge win for us to be brought yeah. in as a managed service product. Um, we had made a company decision very like early to when I started um, that we were not going to go down a distribution path. And, and, and I think it's fair to say, obviously, PSA really doesn't even truly fit into that category. They are so right. on their own. They are so in their own area of what they do and have, and no one really that I've met yet or from an organization perspective, from a partner really replicates what they do in the way they right. do it, obviously. So I think first off that as a company was a huge win. We, we wanted to be a part of the network. And I think, yeah. um, with, with Dan and the team and this new managed service group that they were starting and looking for those types of products that, that were the reoccurring revenue products that really, you know, helped their integrators keep that consistent relationship with the end user, right? Because it wasn't, you know, it, managed services and recurring revenue is not get on and get off a job, right? That's, hey, we're yeah. here to have a relationship, right? And so I think like from a product perspective, I think there was just a ton of alignment. I think PSA is amazing. I love all of the events that they put on. I love you know, all of the support that they also give from an educational perspective. I mean, they have mm -hmm. training programs. They, 
they care and they've thought it through, in my opinion, start to finish. And I think they're exactly what every, every like in between partner should be like. I really do. Mm. And I think then to answer the other part of your question, the partners, I mean, the network of integrators are top notch. I can't even start to tell you, like I was so focused on JCI, obviously for five and a half years. And of course I like knew who my competition was, but I didn't, you know, dive in from an integration perspective, really, unless it was in my territory. Right. So I knew all the local players, but now working through PSA and with PSA, the exposure it's given us the two way partnership we have, it's amazing. And I think Folks like yourselves and all of the partners that we've brought on through them are superstars. And I think they get the technology, they get the value. The conversation is very easy to help the teams understand what we're doing. Um, We've gained tons of support. And I would say too, I mean, we're now doing some really cool efforts with like the Emerging Tech Committee. We're going to be doing a really cool product review where they're going to get to, I guess we're like the first one they're doing it with. But they're nice. going to do, you know, really cool review of us and they're going to, you know, we're going to support it, of course, and we're going to help keep it structured, but it'll be fun because we'll have, we'll get to do a press release with it. We'll get to do some write-ups on it. They're going to get to give their raw, you know, opinion on what they thought of the product, you know, kind of like how IPVM goes and does their thing with product review. But I think this one's going to be extra special because we're going to have so many amazing people involved. So we're excited. That's awesome. Yeah. And PSA Tech's coming up first of May. So that'll be good. A good, a good intro for those who haven't gotten to, to get around Alcatraz. Well, we've got maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds left. Um, any last thing you want to share about, uh, about yourself or about the industry, some advice or some technology advice, like buy Alcatraz, get on out there, give me a call. I think everyone needs to take a check, you know, take a look at our website and, and, you know, we are creating something that we call autonomous access control, which did not exist before Alcatraz, you know, came about. And so I think it's definitely something that everyone needs to just take a chance to learn about, understand what it means, learn artificial intelligence, learn edge technology, and then go check our website out. And I think you'll figure out what we're doing. (laughs) Nice. I think they will too. Sarah, thanks again so much for joining me today. I appreciate it. It It's a lot of fun chatting with you and I look forward to seeing you at uh, PSA Tech, I guess. Yeah, we will see you there. I'm going to be speaking there too. So I'm really excited. All right. Take care of yourself. Aloha, everybody. Be safe. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. Get a vaccine. We'll talk soon. Aloha. Bye, everyone. Thank you.